Horse Racing Nation presents ShapCap with Southern California correspondent Scott Shapiro. ShapCap is sponsored by Derby Wars, your site for daily horse racing tournaments. And ShapperToCapper.com, your site for daily handicapping info from across the United States. Hey, racing fans, welcome back to another edition of Horse Racing Nation presents ShapCap. Halfway through the 2016 racing calendar, and of course now the 2016 Triple Crown is in the books. For the first time in the last few years, we had separate winners for each of the three legs of the Triple Crown. Let's take a look back at what was an exciting run here for the three-year-olds over the last several weeks. We started out, of course, on the first Saturday of May at Churchill down to the Twin Spires. And, of course, it was an exciting race with 20 horses, but it was not a profitable day for any horse player looking for value. The top four betting favorites ran 1, 2, 3, 4 to the wire, with, of course, 2 to 1 favorite Nyquist getting the best of the 20 horse group. Exaggerator came on late to finish second. It was Gunrunner who got a great ride under Florent Geruda finished third. And of course, that's on a tap it, Mo Heyman finished fourth. It was on to Pimlico in two weeks where it appeared that we would have a shot for a second straight Triple Crown winner. Nyquist entered the gates as the heavy 3-5 to five favorite. And while the track was a little bit moist, there was some concern from his connections that he did not want to get kicked back perhaps or that they did not want to take a chance from him coming off the pace. So him... So Doug O'Neill and Mario Gutierrez and crew decided to send Nyquist at all costs and try to win the race into the first turn. This ended up being a recipe for disaster as he ended up banging heads with Uncle Lino through torrid fractions early and it cost him all chance to win. Late running exaggerator got the best of Nyquist for the first time in several tries and it was a great story with Keith and Kent DeSormo, the brothers, getting it done, hitting the wire first at Pimlico in Baltimore. Cherry Wine under Dale Romans finished second, took it, taking advantage of the late pace. And Nyquist, who ran hard and great, was unable to hang on and finish third. It appeared for a moment that we would have a rubber match in Elmont, New York in three weeks in June. But instead, Nyquist spiked the fever and was forced to rest as he headed back to California. Fortunately, it appears that Nyquist is doing well, but it was on to Elmont, New York for the final leg of the, Bel of the Triple Crown, the Belmont Stakes. And it was only Exaggerator, not Nyquist, that would compete. While the media was not as focused, at least the national media, because of the lack of a Triple Crown runner like in years past with California Chrome and, of course, the great American Pharaoh, horse players got a great day of racing headlined by the Belmont, which included Exaggerator and a nice solid group of runners other than Lonnie, the Japanese horse, that had rested during the Pimlico and were arrested to take on Exaggerator. It was a great day of racing that day with a plethora of stakes races. We had an incredible performance from Frosted in the Met Mile. We also saw the return of Flintshire for the Chad Brown Barn. He ran great. It was just a splendid day of racing, topped off by the Belmont, which saw the first chance at making serious money on a short bet. Exaggerator, as we stated last week in Chapcap, was a vulnerable favorite, and we did well giving out three of the top four horses in our horses to beat him. In the end, it was Creator who got a perfect ride under a Rod Ortiz Jr., who nailed Destin at the wire. And then it was Lonnie, the Japanese horse, who was a great story in his own in these three races, running on to finish third. It actually looked like Lonnie might win the race at one point. Our top value pick in the race, Governor Malibu, got a tough trip and finished fourth. He might be one to watch as we move forward. So while it was not a Triple Crown winning season like it was last year, we did not get the media attention that we did in the sport. It was a great season. We saw three different winners, and it should be a great summer as we head to Saratoga and Del Mar, and as well as Monmouth, Arlington, and a few other great summer meetings like Woodbine with a lot of good three-year-olds in the works and a lot of great racing to come. I look forward to seeing how unified an economic model amongst others compete with the three-year-olds from the Derby Trail and the Triple Crown races. It should be a great summer. We're halfway through the racing season. We're looking towards the Breeders' Cup now with the races. The summer meets are some of my favorite points of the year. We're going to take off next week, and we'll be back in July to get things back rolling on ShapCap. We'll be focusing primarily on Del Mar big races. We'll sp sprinkle in some Saratoga. Maybe we'll look at the Haskell Stakes in the Arlington Million. But it's going to be a great summer of racing. We couldn't be any more excited. Enjoy the racing, and we'll talk to you soon.